Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends this is Gunjan here welcome to the 35th episode of my dirty chess tricks in this episode i'm going to show you a very tricky line and in fact a mini rapruta against nimzo larsen opening which start with the move b3 if you are playing a professional chess tournament then you should have a good rapruta against it as this opening is frequently appearing on the board by many strong players now as usual the setup i am going to recommend contains a great surprise value but the most important point i like about it it allows white what he actually wants to do and still get him lot of trouble and even though let's say your opponent doesn't fall for the tricks in most of the lines black get slightly advantageous position Okay so let's get started my recommendation here is you should continue with the move e5 and after bishop to b2 attacking e5 black should continue with knight to c6 white plays e3 so liberating his other bishop and now you grab the center with d5 the main line continue with bishop to b5 so pinning the knight thus threatening the e5 square so black needs to support it with bishop to d6 and now white reveal his idea that is f4 so you can see in the opening white is having a lot of fun he is putting lot of pressure on the black setup and that's why it is very dangerous if you don't know the theory now here black has tried many options such as queen to e7 or queen to h4 but i don't like them so instead of those my recommendation is this tricky move f6 f6 limits the white option and in most of the line now it is white who has to play some careful moves to avoid lots of pitfalls here mainly two options has been tried and let's look each in detail the first move i want to consider is f captures e5 which looks more natural because after f captures e5 this is a very tactical line where i think black is coming out on top in almost all the variations the first move i want to consider is bishop captures c6 and after pawn captures c6 white can play this tricky move bishop captures e5 which happens in many many games white simple idea is if black take this bishop then after queen h5 not only white will regain the piece but at this position white is a clear pawn up and this is something black should certainly avoid but instead of bishop captures e5 here black has a better move queen to h4 which completely destroy white's tactical idea and in fact by force black is winning in almost all the variations if king moves anywhere then bishop will drop so force reply is g3 and now black has this lethal move queen to e4 so attacking two piece here the base response is bishop captures d6 which i have covered in detail in the pgn so kindly go through it but in the database all the games here onwards continue with bishop captures g7 which is more natural as white is saying that okay we both can grab the rook in the corner and the resulting position is better for the white well i'm afraid it's not that easy because after queen captures rook queen to h5 check so white is definitely misplacing the black king and after king to e7 as i have highlighted over here white has tried this four options if king to f1 the knight to f6 is a very strong reply so let's see what happens if white plays other three moves to give you a brief idea in two variations black will nab white queen and in one variation black is nabbing a piece so you can understand the pain white will get in this variation let's look at the first obvious response bishop captures h8 well after this the line is very easy you capture the piece with a check king to e2 queen g2 check if king to d3 then queen to e4 is a very strong reply so accordingly white needs to keep the king in the back rank king to e1 and now the star move bam 
White doesn't have any options. White has to take this piece. And after queen check, king to f1, bishop check, king to e2, and finally bishop to g4, nabbing the white sweetie. The second option is king to f2, which is more natural, protecting the piece. But once again, black has this lethal shot. Bishop captures g3. If king takes g3, then white is going to lose two piece. So accordingly, white is forced to move the king. Well, it doesn't matter whether king goes to the f1 or e2. Both will be treated with equal response. Let's say in this game, white continue with the move e2. And after h6, black has created escape route for his rook. So white has to take this rook now. But then comes this forcing sequence, which by force wins white queen. Before I move on, I like you to pause this video and find out a sequence where you can win actually white's queen. Did you find it? Let's see. Queen check, king to d3, queen to e4 check. And now it doesn't matter whether king goes to the c3 or e2. Let's say in this game white plays king to c3, but after bishop to g4, the queen is a goner. Finally, what happens if queen to h4 check? Well, this is very easy because after king to f7, black is attacking the bishop. So white response is forced. White has to take the rook in the corner. But as happened in other lines, after queen check, king to e2, queen check, king to d3, bishop to f5 check, king to c3 and now queen to e4 threatening a mate so white has to forcefully exchange the queen and in the resulting position black is a clear piece up so these are some of the wonderful tactical line if your opponent greedily capture the e5 pawn more stable reply over here is knight to f3 so white idea is capturing the e5 pawn after castling as this pawn is not going anywhere because of the pin. Well, that's true, but black has equally strong reply, knight to h6. Once again, we need to check out what happens if your opponent take this e5 pawn, which is not good because of the simple queen check. And after g3, this time around, queen to e4 doesn't work, but black has a strong reply, queen to g5. So now this knight is hanging. So white response is force. Either he has to protect the knight or play this tactical move, knight captures c6, which in fact doesn't turn out well because of this lethal blow. Yup, bishop captures g3. If king moves, then as I have highlighted by the arrows, it will be checked by the black pieces. So only the good reply over here is h captures g3. Afterwards, queen captures g3. King to f1, rook to f8 check, king to e2, and bishop to g4. As usual, the white sweetie will disappear from the board. So knight capture c6 looks good, but in fact, it's a complete disaster for the white. So accordingly, d4 is a fitting reply. Well, afterwards, black will continue with his lightning fast development, castle on the king's side. So stopping white to castle on the king's side and there is a threat on e3. So white need to defend this with queen to d2. And after this, black get a very comfortable game with knight captures e5. I reached this position against a 2100 rated player where after this capture, few pieces get exchanged. White plays d captures e5, bishop captures e5, bishop captures e5, queen captures e5. If knight to c3, then c6 is a very strong reply. So in the game, my opponent desperately want to exchange the queen. But I was more than happy as after queen captures, pawn captures, c6, bishop to d3, bishop to f5, bishop captures f5, and knight captures f5. Yes, there's a balanced material in the position. But if you carefully look at it, white is in a lot of trouble. 
White cannot castle because d4 pawn drops. And to illustrate the danger in this position, White continue with the move c3. I respond with the move knight to e3. So there is a threat of knight to c2, which my opponent parry with king to d2, which looks perfectly reasonable. But there comes knight check, king to d1, and now rook to f2. And as we all know, rook on the second rank is a monster piece. My opponent's position quickly fallen apart after just one move, knight to a3 and rook to e8. And those rooks were never connected in the game. And black had all the fun in this game. So once again, white cannot take the e5 pawn. So white has to castle first. And after black castle, now if white wishes, he can take the pawn after bishop captures e6, pawn captures e6, and knight captures e5. So at first sight, it looks like, wow, we win a pawn, right? What is the big idea? Well, just for one pawn, black get tremendous attack on white king, and which can be illustrated via two different mortar. David Hall, one of the leading England Grandmaster, reached this position in one of his game where he continued with the move bishop to f5. So you can see the easy attacking scheme by black. He wants to play queen to g5 and then start pressurizing the king side. His opponent doesn't like this idea, so he immediately played queen to h5, stopping both the queen intruder square. But in fact, it turns out that this is a big time blunder by white. Before I move on, I like you to pause this video and find out what is the wrong with the move queen to h5. Well, I hope you do and find this accurate sequence. Bishop captures e5, bishop captures e5, and now bishop to g4. <laughs> and as happens in many of the cases, this queen is trapped on h5. Well, what to do? White indeed managed to rescue his queen after following more order that is rook check, king to f8, bishop check, king to g7, and queen to e5. But the net result is he has to give up a piece for a two pawn, which is not a good trade. And in fact, after a few moves, black easily converted the win. While bishop to f5 is a completely playable move in this position, my recommendation is you play this tactical move, rook captures f1. Here white response is forced, white cannot take with the king because after queen to f6, queen to f3 and bishop captures e5, black is simply win a piece. So that's not good. So queen captures f1 is forced. And now you play queen to g5 attacking twice on the e5 knight and if knight captures c6 then knight to g4 and that attack is very potent. So accordingly the best response over here is queen to f4. Naturally white wants to exchange the queen because he is a clear pawn up and black accordingly declined the queen exchange with queen to h5. There is a threat on d1 so white needs to parry with knight to a3. And now, very strong move, bishop to e6. So you can see all the moves are very much forced. And just for a one pawn, black had tremendous attacking fun position, which over the board, not easy to defend. To illustrate my point, I like to show you one of my blitz game from this position against a 2200 rated player, where my opponent plays the obvious move, d4. He anticipating my rook f8 move, so that's why he is providing extra protection to his knight. Well, no matter, rook to f8 happen, attacking the queen, queen to g3, and now very good move, knight to g4. So more pieces are joining into the attack. And if h3, then knight to f2 is a very strong reply. So in the game, white continue with the move, rook to e1. I responded with knight to f2. And my opponent plays rook to f1, attacking the knight. Now black's queen 
enter into the white guts with queen to e2. So black has a simple threat of knight to h3 and then nabbing the rook on the f1. And also white cannot play rook captures f2 because of the queen to e1 check. Considering all the options, my opponent continue here with rook to b1. So getting out of any discovery, I continue with knight to d1. So now my simple threat is rook to f1 checkmate, which my opponent parry with the move h3. But nevertheless, rook to f1 happen, king to h2, knight captures b2. If white capture the rook, then black is a clear piece up. So my opponent captured this piece. But that allows the infiltration on the back rank with queen to d1. So there is a mate threatened. So my opponent played queen to g5, giving his king some breathing room. But after a rook check, king to g3, queen check, king to f4, and rook to f1 deliver a finest king dance mate. Well, I hope you enjoy and learn this first part of my mini Rapruta against Nimzo Larsen opening. Stay tuned for the next episode where we are going to look what happens if your opponent plays queen to h5 line. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment on this video. And I will meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care.